Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here with the Let's Talk Money channel and one of the most requested videos by you in the community. Nation, biotech stocks were one of the hottest stock groups last year with the Spider S&P Biotech ETF, that's ticker XBI, up 42% on the year and producing a 15% annual return since 2006. The drive for a COVID vaccine combined with new technologies in gene editing and medicine has led to a boom in development and interest in these companies. Private funding for life sciences companies hit $16.5 billion in the first half alone, with more than 44 funding rounds of $100 million or more, well over anything we've seen in the past few years. And that renewed interest, the investor inflows into these companies, makes me think the group can just keep on running. More investor money means more research and development, the lifeblood of these biotech stocks. With the momentum we've seen last year and the speed of change, over the next 10 years, we could see medical breakthroughs we've only dreamed about in the past. The problem for investors in biotech, though, has always been the complexity on these stocks. There is so much to study here, from the market size on demand for specific diseases to research pipelines and that FDA process. How do you analyze these stocks without a PhD? There are biotech funds like the XBI, which holds 170 companies in the theme. And while I like looking at the fund for ideas, for example, you can go to the fund's website, scroll down to the holdings and get a list of all the stocks held, but it's not the best way to invest. Funds like the Spider S&P Biotech ETF or the iShares NASDAQ Biotech, that's ticker IBB, they invest passively in every company in the index, so not really analyzing each for the best potential returns. So in this video, I wanna walk you through how to invest in biotech stocks, from narrowing your list and analysis to an investment strategy. Then I'll reveal the five biotech stocks I'm watching for 2021. We'll be using stockcard.io to start our search. I love the search feature here. Just type in a theme, for example, biotech, and it drops down with not only individual companies, but also collections of stocks around that theme. Another group to check out here, Gene Therapy, and clicking on the collection shows us 52 companies in that gene editing segment of biotech. From there, we can click on any of these and the platform analyzes each stock with these five cards, growth, operations, return, valuation, and market sentiment. I'll leave a link to Stock Card in the video description below. Check that out and use the promo code BOWTIENATION, all one word in lowercase, for an exclusive discount for everyone here in the community. Now, when you're looking for the best biotech stocks, you can also screen for smaller or mid-sized companies, usually under $10 billion in market cap. Now, there is a trade-off here that I think you need to balance in your biotech portfolio. You want a mix of these smaller startups, those new biotech companies with an innovative approach and some breakthrough ideas, but you also want to look for companies with more than just one idea in its pipeline. For example, this is a problem for investors in BioNTech, ticker BNTX, the partner for Pfizer's COVID vaccine that they're facing right now. The share shot up 265% on that partnership and through early December approval, but are now down 35% because there just isn't much left in the pipeline for that company. You also wanna take a look at the company's balance sheet to make sure it has enough cash to survive while it develops those blockbuster products. Now, most small biotechs are gonna have more cash on the balance sheet than their debt. That's a good sign, but you also have to compare that with things like their cash outflows for research and development just to make sure that they can always survive those years of R&D. Now, before we get to those five biotech stocks on our list, I also wanna share an investing strategy for the group because these are extremely volatile stocks. It's not uncommon for a biotech stock to move 10 or 15% or more in a single day, and that's higher or lower. So you need to put together a portfolio of these and treat it like your penny stocks portfolio. Those of you in the Bowtie Nation know that I'm not just investing in one or two penny stocks for those high potential returns. I'm investing in seven to 10 stocks and writing them for three to five years. Because the nature of these companies, these startup type companies with everything writing on one product or a couple of drug therapies in the pipeline, you're gonna see those early stage returns. You're gonna see two or three of these stocks flop and be dead money at best. Maybe another few are gonna provide decent returns, but it's those one or two that are going to multiply your money five or, or maybe even 10 times that takes your portfolio to that 20 or 30% a year. So you really do need that portfolio view of your biotech stocks, holding a group of individual names and giving them the time to develop those breakthroughs. And here I also like adding an ETF or an index for that core satellite strategy. And this is where you buy a fund in the theme. So maybe one of those two biotech funds for that broad exposure and the benefit from the general upside in the theme. 
Then you use maybe half of your money to buy those individual stocks for the extra upside on your best picks. Our first biotech stock and one of the most popular, CRISPR Therapeutics, ticker CRSP. CRISPR is the leading gene editing company right now with several therapies targeting immuno-oncology as well as regenerative medicine and rare diseases. Basically, CRISPR could make a lot of drugs obsolete by editing patients' genes as a therapy rather than treating it forever. So you can imagine the potential here, not just for the specific therapies the company is working on right now, but just the use of that technology and its broader applications. CRISPR has 10 therapies in the pipeline, five of which are in clinical trials already, so we're potentially just a couple of years from approval. Its immuno-oncology therapies are wholly owned, while it's partnered with Vertex for some of these others. The company has no debt and almost $1.4 billion in balance sheet cash, which is well above its short-term funding needs. CRISPR spends about $230 million a year in R&D expenses, so several years of that cash runway here. The average analyst estimate here is for $136 a share, which is quite a bit lower than the current price, but all these biotech stocks are selling off lately. I think this is one that you buy in though, maybe buying in half now and waiting a few months to invest the rest of your money in the stock, maybe waiting for a better price. Hold it for three to five years and you're gonna get that 10 times your money. That is the kind of potential in this company. Next here is $6.8 billion IOVANCE Biotherapeutics, ticker IOVA, a biotech focused on immuno-oncology, easily one of the highest margin segments in biotech. And the company announced in August that it had completed enrollment in its cervical cancer study for LN145, a pivotal program for the company. It also reported data on three other programs during the quarter, including its melanoma program. IOVANCE is constructing a cell therapy center at the Navy Yard in Philadelphia and expects commercial manufacturing to start in 2022, so we should get more revenue certainty through this year. The company has $772 million in balance sheet cash against no debt and about $212 million in annual r and expenses. Add in approximately $56 million in other operating costs, and this one has about three years worth of cash flexibility. Exact Sciences, ticker EXAS, is further along than most of the companies on the list and already booking sales. The company is in the diagnostic space, screening for cancers through a DNA and protein-based test that can detect multiple types of cancer in just one test. It's partnered with the Mayo Clinic and Johns Hopkins University and estimates the total addressable market at over $25 billion. The company has booked three years of sales growth and reported an 87% year-over-year increase in the third quarter. Over the last four quarters, it's booked over $1.2 billion in sales from lab services and other revenue. Now contrasting that, the financial position is a little weaker here. The company has $806 million in balance sheet cash against about $85 million in debt, but spends roughly $1.6 billion a year in those total operating costs. Not a pristine financial picture, but it's growing revenue so fast that I think this one can show profitable earnings within the next year or two. Exact Sciences is one of the few biotech stocks that hasn't zoomed past analyst price targets. The shares were up 38% last year, but at an average analyst target of $157 a share, there's still 20% upside from here. Another gene editing biotech stock, Selectus, ticker CLLS, with a focus on immunotherapies for cancer. This one isn't quite as far along as CRISPR in its therapies, but is targeting different needs, so I don't think it's necessarily an either or decision. Selectus has six therapies in the pipeline with key developments within the next year. In just two target therapies with its Allergene partnership, the company could book up to $2.8 billion in development and sales milestones, which is huge for a company that booked all of $15 million in total 2019 sales. The company has increased revenue by 20% over the last year and has a strong balance sheet that we're looking for in these biotech stocks. Balance sheet cash of $360 million is more than enough to cover the $126 million in annual operating costs, including $94 million in R&D expenses. The company has no debt, though it does have about $46 million in capital lease obligations, but still a great financial position. Shares were up 68% last year, right around the average analyst target of $29 per share. But again, this is one that I think grows into those returns over the next few years for a solid double digit payoff. Another biotech name that got slammed last week, but could be a buying opportunity, Twist Biosciences Corporation, ticker TWST. Shares were up 750% to last year's peak, so maybe a little profit taking is expected and probably more on the way. 
The company's synthetic silicon-based DNA technology is completely disruptive though, and this one should keep running after it's had time to cool off. The company grew revenue by 67% last year to $90 million after doubling it in 2019 and has over $290 million in balance sheet cash. That's more than enough to cover annual operating costs of $146 million and the $26 million in debt and lease obligations. The average analyst estimate for $112 per share is still a little below the current price here, so maybe you watch this one for a while to see if you can get a better price, but definitely a solid future in the biotech space. Click on the video to the right for a portfolio update on our 2021 Bowtie Nation portfolio and the three stocks I added last week. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.